especially at a young age, you know, he's the type of guy who, you know, he could miss, you know, a number of shots, um, but you know that at the end of the game, he wants the ball. And uh, to have that level of, you know, faith in yourself um, this early, early in your career, um, you know, there's big things ahead for him. Ryan, what's your impression of the whiskey, and what do you think his legacy would be whenever he decides yeah. to retire? I mean, legacy, you know, legacy is almost a word that doesn't do his career justice in terms of, um, he, I mean, I think he's, the impact he's made on basketball is one that is going to be um, something that people are always going to talk about. And it, 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 it's on a number of different levels um, in terms of the international play um, coming over. Right. And then also, you know, his, his ability, you look at how guys are shooting, big, big guys are shooting the ball. Carl, you know, one of our guys is shooting over 40% from three. Right. Well, Dirk was one of the first guys to really, really, you know, step out and, and really make an impact out there. Um, and so he's kind of changed the way I think people watch the game and um, almost to a point where you don't have to tell a big guy just because you're over seven feet, you're going to go down in the post. Right. Um, he's, he's really spread the court and um, he's done great things for the game. And his level of class is also one that I think is something that should be noted. Um, just his integrity, you know, with how he's approached the game and, and respect to the game. So, um, you know, it's an honor to be competing against him. What do you remember about those battles between him and Garnett back yeah. in the day when your dad was coaching? Yeah, you? yeah. I mean, it, I remember I was, you know, I was a kid, obviously, but it, it he uh, just how they how they used to battle. It was it was a it was a something of like extreme mutual respect between those two, right. and it was because they they both I think they both understood um, how the other approached the game and how the other prepared for you know guarding that guy, and it was something that you know you see. They, they, they were also all team all about the team and so you know as they as they played and as they you know years went by um, you saw these guys would always it always looked a little more like it was uh, it, it was a one-on-one -on -one matchup but it wasn't a one-on-one -on -one matchup because they were great teammates getting each other getting their teammates involved too right there's another two young big men that might be the next generation of, of Dirk versus KG and Carl mm -hmm. Anthony Towns and now Porzingis with the Mavs yeah um, is that something you're looking forward to looking forward to for the league? Just all these amount of young big man stars going at yeah. each other for the next decade or so. Yeah. Well, I'm not looking forward to preparing uh, <laughs> against these guys. Um, I wish we had the only <laughs> big man star. But um, for the league, yeah, for the league, yeah, it's good. It's um, it's a positive. It's uh, you know, and and you like like we touched on um, those guys. These guys are have the ability to score inside um, at the rim, and these guys have the ability to score outside. And as you see more and more, and we've tried to put Carl in more ball screening situations as the team, as the season is going on, where he's actually handling at times, and you know, just something we're tinkering with. Um, you see that a number of other places too. So it, it really does, uh, you know, stress the positionless basketball. In your opinion, do you think uh, Luka Doncic is the rookie of the year? I think I think it's definitely. Uh, you got a couple guys that are very uh, worthy of it. You know, Trey Young's been um, very good as of late. Um, Luka. He's he's been very consistent throughout the whole year with things, and uh, you know I'd, I'd say it's it's probably one of the closer ones that you, you can think of, um, you know as of, as of right now. What type of leadership has uh, D Rose brought to your locker room this year? He the, the one the one thing about Derek is that you know Derek is quiet, but he uh, he commands an ultimate respect as soon as he you know as soon as he's around, and he, he has a different um, aura about him. Uh, fact that he's been MVP, youngest MVP ever. ever. Uh, guys want to want to know what he has to say about either their games or about you know what's going on in terms of what they see, what he sees on the court. Um, so for him to be a leader, and, and and then he's also stepped up in more of a vocal leadership role, um, which was something that we talked about uh, you know over the last couple of months here. And he's he's been really good for our young guys, and you know we're playing a, a lot of young guys right now, similar to Dallas with things. And uh, I think just having him around and still being vocal, um, even though he is um, hurt, uh, is, is something that's going to help these guys uh, in their future. We do the things that we've worked on as, as a team, um, offensively and defensively. And then also, you know, with, with him, we expect him to be aggressive. Uh, we, we always expect him to play at a high level. And, um, you know, conversation-wise, he, he understands that, you know, for, for this team to continue to grow, um, he needs to, you know, bring everybody with him. And uh, he's doing a, a good job of that. And, and you know, even if the wins don't translate necessarily, um, with with all these young assets around him, um, and everybody getting to, getting to know how to play with each other and play with Carl, um, it's, it's going to be something that's going to help us in the future. Um, so that's a positive. But we, we always expect Carl to compete and play at a high level.